All right, well, hello everyone. Today we are going to be doing something very fun. Uh, you know that my channel has done some very interesting things in the past. Some of them have been ranking videos of adorable little meeples from the board game Root. We are actually going to be doing another Root Meeple ranking, though this time it's not just going to be me. So you're going to have another voice into the uh, video, which is actually going to be Josh Yearsley, who is going to be the lead designer of the next Root expansion, which is amazing. Hello, Josh. Hey, Sam. It's so great to be here. It's excited to... Uh get in front of people's faces and see what they have to say about my opinions. Yeah, <laughs> especially on like meeples too. This is like such a safe space for you. Yeah, no, we, you uh, can <laughs> people, people have strong, you know, if, if we know anything about our audience is that people have strong opinions about the animals. They, 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 we've got factions. Oh, yeah. We've got factions for the factions, basically. <laughs> it's true. Yeah, people are definitely, um, very opinionated on every new animal coming out, all of the thoughts that they were having. Um, I think before we actually get into the maple ranking, I did want to ask a couple questions, and then I'll probably be asking a few, some silly questions, some more serious questions throughout the ranking video as well. Yeah, it sounds great um, But to just me. to start off, um, I was wondering, what do you do for Leader Games? Uh, and like, I guess, what's your journey been with Leader Games leading up to now you actually designing this new expansion? Yeah, so I've been with Leader Games since basically the beginning. Um, long story short, uh, I got connected with Leader Games um, by uh, through a playtesting convention. So uh, I worked for about seven and a half years full time as a freelance uh, rules writer and editor in the industry. And basically, I was at this playtesting convention called Metatopia. It's this uh, small but very, very good convention, highly recommended. Uh, and I uh, went and I play tested a uh, game uh, from Jeff Ted Ball, a um, friend of the studio. And basically, I gave him some feedback. We exchanged business cards. Um, and he sent me an email a couple of weeks later and said, hey, I was reading some of your blog posts on your site. Um, and there was a post about the rulebook for Chaos in the Old World, which I worked a lot on. And I had basically uh, lovingly critiqued this rulebook. It's a game that I have a lot of fondness for. It's a, you know, <laughs> Eric Lang great, basically. Like anybody who's interested in asymmetric games should play Chaos in the or Old World. It's just fantastic. Definitely. Um, definitely a must play. Um, and so I had given some, uh, a breakdown of this rule book and, you know, what I would do different. And he sent me an email and he said, I love the blog post. I agree, um, with your, your critique. Um, and I have a friend, Patrick Leader, who is looking for, uh, a rules editor. And basically, uh, vast Crystal Caverns was in the last few weeks of, um, <laughs> before we, they sent it to the, uh, the manufacturer. And so uh, Patrick brought me in, and I basically had to do a cannonball run edit on that uh, on that rule book, um, and, and w which was wild, you know, trying trying to edit that rule book in that amount of time. <laughs> um, but apparently, I did a decent enough job that Patrick wanted to keep me on. Um, so uh, through the years, so like when Root came around, um, I was uh, much more involved. It was no longer a cannonball run situation. It was, um, you know, as we got into developments, um, I was there throughout doing usability testing, um, writing the rules, uh, you know, doing the player boards, basically trying to make that um, new player experience as easy as possible. Um, and so over time, uh, I got involved in more and more different parts of the studio. So kind of going into Oath, um, Oath was really the first one where I did a lot of development work, you know, a lot of content development, some systems design. Um, and Oath was really the turning point for me at the company because um, it was basically uh, the point at which the pandemic started. So, uh, we were, you know, three or four months into serious oath development and uh you know the studio said 
hey, why don't you basically spend all of your time working on Oath? And I was like, that sounds good. And then they were like, do you want to go full time? And I was like, absolutely. Um, so basically over time I've moved um, I still do rules stuff, um, but I've moved from being just a rules person uh, into development. Um, and then on arcs, um, I did a lot of content design. Uh, I designed a lot of uh, a lot of cards. I did a lot of the fates in the campaign um, and was a co-lead developer with Cole on it. And so basically that was, um, you know, I was doing development and rules and design throughout that project. And so um, as that was winding down uh, late late last year and early early this year, um, you know, Cole asked me whether I would be interested in doing a or doing the the next root expansion. Um, and I was really excited about this because I had been there in development for all of the root stuff. Um, I designed the keepers and iron. Uh, for the uh, for the Marauder expansion, and so I was definitely excited to get my hands on you know doing it more and really having a a full project from the beginning that uh, I could call my own. So that is so cool. That is so cool. Uh, note about the Keepers and Iron. They are one of the most like I think that that was one of the factions where I was like, thank goodness we got another faction where I actually have to really work hard to think about why the things are happening because i think since like lizard cult it was almost like I, I i could understand the faction after like a first play and like understand it but i wasn't good at it but the keepers and iron specifically i remember thinking this gave me like lizard cult vibes because i was like playing the faction and then i was like okay but like why and <laughs> what what is the strategy here it took me so long to figure them out which i, I just love them so much for that yeah, my um, a complex faction. <laughs> yeah, no, certainly uh, the keepers and iron higher on the intricacy scale. Very, very much a brain burner sort of thing. Um, mm -hmm. And so one of my uh, sort of um, philosophies for myself going into this expansion was. Uh, listen, we can't have a bunch of brain burners. You know, you already did your brain burner faction, so uh, promise that these ones will be a little bit less intricate. But uh, yeah, the keepers are definitely out there for the uh, for the puzzle heads. Cool, cool, cool. So, what what do we got for the new expansion? Uh, well, at least, what can you tell me? What 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 is the stuff that's coming out with the new expansion that you can say right now? Yeah, so basically um, the expansion is going to be two new factions. Um, the factions, the elevator pitch for these are we have uh, bats and frogs. Um, the bats are basically a law assembly. They are trying to uh, wind down the war, coordinate uh, the inhabitants of the woodlands, um, in order to create a movement to uh, basically disarm and um, demobilize uh, the factions in the woodland. So this is basically, I almost think of them as kind of like a bizarro woodland alliance where the woodland mm -hmm. alliance is um, trying to um, heighten the, uh, the, the consequences of the war, basically trying to bring the war into the public consciousness in a way that motivates uh, revolution. Um, so they are they are gaining support through sort of heightening the um, get gathering support through heightening the consequences of the war for the woodland inhabitants. Whereas the assembly, um, the bats are basically trying to um, almost do the opposite. They're mobilizing um, the woodland to bring everybody that to the table and say, "Yeah, actually, this is really bad for everybody. We need to cool it down." <laughs> um, so that's kind of the the bats conceit. Um, and then the frogs, the frogs are a diasporic faction. So they are basically, um, the, there are frogs in the woodland and frogs that have been dispersed out of the woodland and they're trying to come back together again and, um, uh, basically integrate into the woodland in a way where they are, uh, a respected, um, and, uh, they, they are respected and protected. Um, group, so you know they've been scattered to the winds, um, and they are basically trying to 
um, find a safe haven. It's a really bad time for it because there's a civil war going on, <laughs> um, but you can you can figure out your own head cannons as to why um, all of the the different parts of the diaspora are coming coming back together. Um, but they they are really focused on um, trying to peacefully uh, reintegrate into the woodlands. So both of these factions kind of are um, they are they are looking to um, they consider the woodland a home, um, and mm. both of these factions are really looking at the looking at the woodland as a character and what it means for. Um, the woodland inhabitants to like be a character. So like uh, I'm really focused on the politics of the woodland creatures in this expansion. That's awesome. That's very, very cool. It almost seems like it's another, I guess more on the lines of like river folk expansion than it is, I guess um, the underworld, because it seems like these factions are a little bit more like, table oriented there's there's more discussions happening around the table at least that from my perception of of what you've told me is that something that you were like kind of trying to make a goal of your design process with these ones yeah definitely you know i i really love the the player politics of root mm. and the lizard folk especially uh, the lizard cult is the prime example in my mind of of that, at least with experienced players. Um, and this yeah. is one point where my de design philosophy in this expansion is I want to bring that sort of river folk vibe. Um, but one thing that we have seen over time with the river folk factions is that they really come into their own, especially the the lizards. They really come into their own only kind of once you have experienced players at the table. Um, mm. If you have new players trying to engage with, with the lizards, it can be um, difficult sometimes because the, the way that their politics operate, um, it's a natural consequence of what people are doing, and it models something very real and interesting about um, cults and just generally about movements that um, try to mobilize uh, the disenfranchised. Um, but at a mechanical level, it can sometimes be difficult for new players to understand the implications of the actions that they're taking. And from the lizard's perspective, it can be difficult for them to advocate for themselves, to say, hey, um, hey, player, um, could you, like, discard some, like, fox card? They're like, please don't play that card. Like, I, you know, can we make some deals? Um, so for this expansion, totally. one thing that I'm trying to focus on is give that real Riverfolk vibe interplayer politics while structuring uh, certain parts of it in a way that make it a bit easier for new players to kind of engage with. That is very exciting to hear. I'm... I'm I'm so excited to hear that you're doing this because like I have a lot of friends personally that have been playing Root and their favorite factions are like River Folk, Lizard Cult for those player interaction moments that you're just describing. So to like be able to be like, hey, I think this is this expansion is really going to interest you. Uh, it's it's going to be cool for them to have like more options for that kind of play. So super cool, super cool. Um, I also heard that you actually brought the new meeple designs for these two new factions which is very very fun we're not going to be ranking them um but what we are going to do is we're going to actually be able to get a first look at those meeples at the end of our ranking so uh thank you so much for bringing those that's exciting Absolutely. Um, and viewers that are watching you'll be able to see them so that's going to be very very cool we'll, we'll just put um, them i both, would love both it both top tier just just automatic <laughs> oh yeah 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 that's that that's that's just it yeah so you don't even have to worry about my opinion on them we'll just put them at the very very top <laughs> People can't get mad at me for, for not liking them. No, I'm just kidding. I'm, I'm very excited. Um, so actually, I would love to dive into the rankings uh, a little bit. And um, like I said, I, I'm probably going to ask questions throughout. Some of them a little silly, some of them more serious. But 
I just thought it'd be fun to kind of have like a questionnaire slash ranking meeples. We are Absolutely. actually going to be doing it the the right way. We're going to be ranking meeples, you know, <laughs> e giving each a number or a rank. We do not do S tier systems, okay? That is the laziest way you could possibly do a ranking because how do you know, you know, like how bad <laughs> the top one is from the bottom one? So we just love, I, I personally love to just do like numbered rankings, each individual meeple. Um, we're going to be only ranking the faction meeples. So we're going to be leaving the hirelings out of this. Uh, we're, we are going to be including the Vagabond meeple pack. Um, so we're going to be doing basically a total of 18 meeples. Um, I've done this before. I don't actually know if it's changed. Um, my wife told me, uh, do not watch that video because who knows, maybe your opinions have changed and just kind of figure it out from there. So we'll see. I, I actually don't know. I rewrote it from the top and we'll see how those have changed. Yeah, and I've never done a meeple ranking video, so my my oh. opinions are completely, <sighs> completely untainted, so. Oh, in, this is beautiful. <laughs> oh my gosh. I love this. I love this. I will, I will try to be, I mean, I know that you work for leader games, so I, I'm gonna try to be as nice as possible about that. <laughs> It's okay if you put the keepers on the bottom. <laughs> oh no, 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 no! Actually, that that one might make you more more happy. But I will, I will actually start off with my my least favorite meeple of this range. Um, this would be number eighteen for me. Um, it's gonna have to be the Arbiter meeple. Uh, this guy right here is. Uh, I just don't know. I can't get behind this meeple. <laughs> He's but like he's got, blue but he's and white. Got such a, he's got such a fuzzy mustache. I mean, how can you say no to the mustache? So that's what that's like the biggest argument for this meeple. But then see, like once we've got the the keepers coming out, then you can see like what a badger could look like. You know, I'm comparing these two, and I'm like, I really don't like the arbiter. They've got different so, um, vibes, yeah. certainly. <laughs> Oh yeah, oh yeah, for sure. They actually might even be different types of uh, badgers. I'm not actually sure with like the design process of these, because um, I do I I know there are different types of badgers that look very different, but yeah. I don't know if those two are, are different or not. We, we 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 actually went back and forth on the keepers. We went back and forth on whether they should be American badgers or European badgers, and we, we can talk a little bit more about that when we get to the Ooh. the keepers. But yeah, there's some, some yeah there. yeah I would love to. That's cool. That's cool. Where, where, what would you put at the bottom of your list, Josh? Oh, bottom of my list, boy. <laughs> um, see, I just have, I have the 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 meeples all kind of splayed out in front of me. Um, bottom you're, of you're my so much list. Wiser. <laughs> um, bottom of my list. Uh, I'm just gonna have to go with the the Ronin vagabonds. And there, there is okay. a there is a simple reason for this, which is it's just a color swap. Of the original, <laughs> so <laughs> so that's mi fair. Mi minus points for 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 the color swap. I do love the original vagabond, but you know, uh, it's it's just it's just a little bit you know reversey color. So I'm gonna have to yeah. go with the Ronin. Totally, totally. Um, actually, my next my next pick, seventeen, is also the Ronin. So yeah. it's also pretty low on my list. Uh, the exact same reasons. It's just kind of like the inverted version of the 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 thief vagabond or the original vagabond meeple. Um, so you know, I just can't put it. I can't put it any higher due to that. Even if I like the meeple, I feel like others deserve more. You know, kudos because of it's just it's it's kind of like yeah. It just it just reminds you. It reminds you of the original. So <laughs> yep, exactly, exactly. And how much better that one is, or at least to me. So yeah. we'll we'll see, we'll see. Uh, so what, we do what's your we do have one, some Josh? we do have some agreement then. So some some decent agreement yes. on the Ronin. So um, yeah, uh, yeah. So that's good. So ho ho hopefully yeah, we're starting we'll, off on we'll, a good we'll, note here. <laughs> we'll balance. We'll balance con some controversy and some agreement here. So my number seventeen, um, I am going to go with the hmm. See this this this, this is a tough one. Um, I'm actually <laughs> going to go with another vagabond variant for my seventeen. I'm going to go with the uh, ranger vagabonds. Whoa! Um, yeah, Ranger Vagabond, okay. and and the reason for this, um, I'll I'll give a little insight into my own head about what I'm what I'm looking please, for in Root Um 
I'm a silly guy, and I like how silly Root is. Um, mm. And the rain, the ranger is just too serious, man. He's just a he's just a serious guy, and and like <sighs> every fair. every you know, even though the arbiter is like also kind of serious, he's like grumpy serious in kind of a funny way whereas the ranger <laughs> he's got this like i'm so cool you know i drive i drive right. a like a, a a black car that goes real fast um you know that that sort of vibe you know i i put the spoiler on my car uh yeah. he, he's got a he's got a vibe that i just don't i just don't vibe with myself in the just in the doesn't universe work. yeah yeah I, I always like liken him to like the chosen one because he's got like the scar too, so it kinda reminds me of like Anakin Skywalker vibes. Uh-huh. Like he's definitely he's definitely feeling like he's very, very unique in this woodland. Yeah. <laughs> and also, yeah, this the scar is a cool touch though, I will say. I do like the scar because like the yeah. different eye color, that's pretty cool. Yeah, I do I do like uh, the 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 reverse eye color, but yeah, just too too serious. Too serious. Okay, okay. You might you might disagree with uh, with my uh, sixteen. Um, this is going to be the tinker. Um, mm, so yeah. there's a reason for this. There's a reason for this. I actually just it hurts my brain to look at the color combination of these. Mm, for some mm-hmm. reason, my head says that gray and yellow should not be together. <laughs> Sure. I don't know what it is. When I'm looking at the meeple, like the color combination just kills me a little bit. But also, one more thing about the Tinker really quick. Um, I think that it's just so much pre-Partisans deck pain of the Tinker being in the game (laughs) that has now made me just forever despise the Tinker. Because for the viewers that don't know, the original deck came with favors, and the Vagabond was the only Vagabond that could actually craft those favors. And the best part is, they could craft it, grab it from the discard pile, and hold it over everybody's head for the rest of the game. Um, and it was like a painful era of Root when, when the game kind of first released, and there was many game nights where it'd be like, okay, we're, we're not playing with the Tinker anymore. Yeah, it did, <laughs> though. It, it, it did generate the very good um, the very good meme of the Infinity Stone. Have you yes! seen the Infinity Stone? The three hammers. Yes. Can put, put it up put it up on screen here for a second. That, yes, I will. I will. That, that, Beautiful. that art, though, I feel like worth it worth it for the broken interaction there that's fair that's fair i'm still gonna go ahead and put it at at, at number 16 for myself though yeah because i just can't i just can't anymore that's fair you're you're you've got you've got too many too many bad memories <laughs> too many um, burns. my my 17 um i think i am going to go with the uh the otter meeple actually for number for number 17 oh man Um, dude this is where you're gonna be catching heat yeah (laughs) oh bro dude anytime i've talked i think on the otter i think i've gotten okay i'm interested to hear your thoughts on this one yeah so so otter meeple um you know i do i do like the whiskers the whiskers are hot are a high point for me um, mm-hmm. But there's something about it that kind of, I don't know, misses, misses a little bit of their fundamentally, like, they're kind of, they're kind of like, I mean, they're weapons merchants, right? And the, <laughs> the like, poor old me eyes up, for some reason, I'm just like, ah, they, 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 they look so cute and uh, cute and innocent. Um, and the, the, the eyes up like they're that when otters are at the table, I feel like otter players are more like lording over the other players. Like you want this, right? You want, you, you right, want this right, sweet right. thing. <laughs> and it just what strikes me this? as almost like the, I, I, I like look at them and maybe again, this is just like, my, maybe some internalized anger about the otters, about that that feeling of just like, oh man, like you little you little assholes, like you're you're lording yes. this card over me. <laughs> but it, it, I don't know. I just like look at them and I just want to. I don't know. You don't want to hear what I want to do. Throw them, throw so. them, throw them in the river. <laughs> yeah. So similar. Throw them back I, into I the guess river. similar uh, <laughs> similar feelings to you you and the tinker. I guess this internalized rage at the way that uh, yes. that the otters are looking at me. <laughs> I I really can't wait to hear people's reactions to to your placement of the Riverfolk Company. This is gonna be funny. Um, <laughs> so, uh, 
<laughs> my next my next pick uh, we're at uh 15 which by the way the numbers are all going to be up so if we we might get those wrong but it's going to show the correct thing <laughs> on the screen for everyone because <laughs> we're just trying to keep it going um my next pick is the underground duchy meeple at 15 mm-hmm. um my reasons are because i don't like the color it's too it's perfect for the duchy. I will say you guys did a good job. I feel like you guys chose the right color for the meeple. But personally, I don't like the color. So it just doesn't help here. Like, I think it's a cute meeple. I actually like that it shows like the different color. Like it's got the, the blacked out portion of the, the, the upper head. Um, but it just it doesn't work for me. And you know what's interesting is that the digital adaption changed the color from this tan to a darker brown almost color. Mm-hmm. And I actually dig that. It's almost like a rust brown color. I think I would have liked it more if you had gone with that, which is interesting because they they changed. I don't know why they changed it. They had no. What was their reason? <laughs> Honestly, I don't know either. We'll have to ask Dire Wolf. We'll yeah, that I'm change. so curious about like, that because I was like, they originally had it. Yeah, <laughs> they originally yeah, I mean, had it with when, the same when color. You're working, they when you're working it. with like, uh, you know, table like you you even see this in things like Tabletop Simulator. Um, yeah. The way that colors render on a screen and with your uh, eyeballs at a table, um, I suspect it's something like that. The way the way that the um, the the way that uh, color contrast uh, worked on their yeah. board, I, I bet it was something like that. But that's just my best guess. Yeah, because um, like to see the building, maybe that's what it is for like the citadels and markets. It might be kind of hard to see the difference between the tan and the white potentially on the screen. I, yeah, I who, no who knows? Who knows? So you're, you're yeah, who not knows? a you are not a tan stan, as it were. You're, you're just not, no, you're not, not a it. tan. Mm 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 mm. Where are you at for fifteen? All right, and so for your number fifteen, Josh, where are you at? Yeah, so number fifteen. See, here's where it's starting to get harder because I like mm. a lot of the root meeples. Um, I am actually going to agree with you on the underground duchy. We've got we've got another point of agreement here. Oh, yeah. Okay. Um, so some things that I like about um, the the meeple. <laughs> I like the little cute upturned snout. Very good. Yes. A plus. Um. But they the they kind of blend together a little bit. Like the all of the all of the other factions have. I think what it might be actually is, um, while I do like the uniqueness of the profile eye, I am kind of missing the eyeballs. Like I, th- yeah. I think I think there's some something. It, it feels a little bit a little bit off. Um, for the for the lack of for the lack of eyeball, um, it sure, feels it sure. feels thematically appropriate. Um, but <laughs> yeah, I just kind of want to look into the eyes of my enemy when I'm fighting them. So <laughs> no, I I get that I get that they're just like coming up from the ground, just like what what was that? Mm-hmm. Yeah, <laughs> and so, then murdered. <laughs> yeah, so I I think um, I think it yeah it just has something to do with the the eyeball that it it it. Uh, yeah, I, I, the and the the color. I also partially agree with you on the color. I think it is correct thematically. I would say mm. the 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 underground duchy thematically correct, but a little, um, I don't bland. know, a little bland, a little bland. Yeah, maybe a little bland. Yeah, yeah. it's so hilarious that we say this because for some people they are like die hard duchy's the best meeple. So mm-hmm. <laughs> that's the fun thing about opinions, right? Yep, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> so um i i so we're we're at 14 now yep um and like you said this is where, actually where i would say it's starting to get into like the mid tier ish area for numbers i feel like 14 between like six or something um right so i have it written down as ranger and even as i'm saying this it is a little painful but i do think that that's the correct choice so the ranger for the reasons that you said i i can also agree um the the vibe is a little different than the other meeples 
almost seems like he came from a different game as an angrier animal and somehow his meeple got like stuck into the pipeline <laughs> like <Yeah. laughs> everybody else has either like a funny expression or an inquisitive expression or a cunning expression but the ranger genuinely looks like he wants to beat stuff up <laughs> which is so funny <laughs> um, so i which, think that's truer just because of that. to the nature of what's actually happening but yeah it just feels right enough, yeah right right there is one meeple that I think could be more angry, but I'll talk about that when we get <laughs> to it. Um, and I will give you a hint. We're coming up very soon. But Josh, where are you at for 14? Yeah, 14. Mm, I'm a little split, but I this may be a little bit controversial. Um, <laughs> I am going to do... Uh, it's my favorite faction, but I'm going to say the Eerie Dynasties. Eerie oh. Dynasties is my number 14. <laughs> okay. Okay. Um, All I, right. Again, love, I, I, I love the eyebrow. Eyebrow top notch. Um, yeah. But there, there, is, there, is, um, there is something about the... Um, the it's 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 a it's a good distinctive shape from the rest of the uh base game factions um but yeah. i feel like i want just something a little bit more it's i think this is another mm -hmm. there's something i think that's difficult about these silhouette um these silhouette meeples where it doesn't give you quite as much expressive range um it, I mean, this is coming from a complete, like, I don't know. I, I'm so good at art. I don't know anything uh, about how to, how to draw. My, my, my drawings are all stick figures. So my extremely Sorry, way, Kyle. Yeah, my, my, my extremely basic um, co concept that I, that I think is going on here is just that, yeah, there is something about these full profile meeples that give you a little bit less to work with. Um, yeah. that I just, I just want to see more, I want to see more of that bird face and the, the eyebrow is doing a lot of work here basically. And that is definitely super props to mm -hmm. Kyle, um, for, for getting so much out of a single eyebrow. Um, but yeah, I just want to see more, more of this bird. Yeah. I, I, uh, I can't say that I agree, but <laughs> I can say that I respect your decision. I can also say that we're kind of close in mm -hmm. those in those rankings um so but we're, we're not there yet but we're, we're, we're close uh really quickly uh, a silly question um if each of the factions ran for uh, for office uh which one would you vote for as the president Ooh, that's a very good question <laughs> um i am gonna have to go for um See, my, my gut reaction uh, was the Corbin <laughs> conspiracy. <laughs> um, just because they've, they, they've, oh, at least, they've at least got some parts of their, their, their faction that wear glasses. Um, the, uh, That's the, fair. The That's hireling, fair. That's the fair. The hireling Corvids have, have glasses on. Yeah. It makes me. There were actually, um, if I'm remembering correctly... Um, the the original version of those hirelings was actually kind of almost a mad scientist vibe. Uh, the, oh, that's and, wonderful. Yeah, so I think that they were originally like Corvid like scientists or Corvid experimenters or something like that. So I think that's, that's really cool. I think that's kind of where my gut reaction is coming from on the Corvids, even though sure. they're you know literally setting bombs uh, and extorting yeah, people. Yeah, that's, that's my gut feeling. You know. Yeah. <laughs> That's wonderful. I uh, had to have to mix some funny questions in there somewhere. All right. Absolutely. So uh, rank 13 is where we're 13. at right now. Um, and this is where I'm going to have to make some people very mad, I think. Uh, but it's going to be the Lord of the Hundreds slash Warlord Meeple. Yes, that is, that is, that is what I'm going to say. So the reason why I say this is remember when I was talking about a meeple that I think should look a little bit more angry. I think that the Lord of the Hundreds meeple, it doesn't match the vibe of playing it. 
if that makes sense. I have a very logical approach to this, okay? I think about these things. So when I'm playing the Warlords and I look at the rats, they don't look like they are, like, <sighs> going through the woodland, trying to, you know, scavenge and, and take out the, the whole forest. They really look so chill if you look at the maple itself. <laughs> I mean, so you want so you want at the, least you know you want me. the claws out you want you know you want I, either or, or the like either torch. the claws yeah right something that makes them look like maybe like forward movement maybe would have been kind of cool like add like a little bit of like a uh, like a, a, a like a, a slant comic, to the a comic, meeple a comic book like you know phew, kind of like graphic yeah. in the back so they're just like yeah, always yeah. moving yeah and I've I've said this a couple of times that um, you guys actually had a different meeple design for the for the rats uh, before you guys settled on the one that you currently had that I remember you kind of showed off a couple of times and I actually preferred that one uh, over this this version it had like a chip in its ear and it looked just more like it kind of looked more rangery I'll be honest yeah. um, but I just remember thinking uh, that silhouette was too similar to some of the other ones that we have already had, and I think that's why you guys ended up. Going yeah, with that that was one, one reason. I believe the other one, if I remember correctly, was that it was just a lot easier to make the warlord variants work um, um, with with, with, the, with the newer silhouette. I think that was another reason that we we ended up going with the with the um, the one that we chose. Um, totally fair. Now, now, Sam, I will say uh, this: this meeple, you know, even though I've been talking smack about the the silhouettes, um, this meeple is a silhouette meeple, which does imply forward movement. So, art lesson. That's fair. <laughs> that is fair. <laughs> <laughs> Dang, I'm still not gonna move it up. Yeah. I'm still not gonna move it up. <laughs> um, Okay. Point, uh, I mean, to to be to be honest, um, though, the the Lord of the Hundreds meeple is, if it's not going to be this one, it's going to be close in my ranking. Um, yeah. For me, though, um, my next one is going to be the uh, Adventurer Vagabond, the the old okay. the old owl, the old owl All right. friends. Um. So, I think for me, I'm gonna go. I'm gonna go full color on this. I like a lot of things about this meeple. <laughs> I like the expressiveness of the face, the pointy nose and brow. That's all great. But the like light brown on tan just does not really hit it for me. Um, right. It 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 feels. Um, it feels like a watered down cup of like a watered down latte, basically. There's some there's something yeah. there's something about this mixture of colors that while it's like it's it's pleasant, I guess, but like it's not I don't know, it's not striking. It's it's not It's not like, where it needs to be. Yeah, like all I feel like all of the other all of the other, or at least almost all of them, the the meeple designs, um, the the color choices feel more um, more striking. So we just we just gotta yeah. make it we just gotta make it pop a little bit more, okay? This 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 right. meeple needs to pop, okay? Um, <laughs> just a bit more pop. Just a bit more pop on this one. Um, so yeah, I think it has something to do with like the con the color contrast. Just like isn't isn't really hitting it for me on on this one totally totally um you know i actually think our our list actually might end up pretty pretty close to each other i have a feeling i don't know i'm curious to see the end results but i will say i think for the most part generally we're agreeing on some things and i and i appreciate that for rank 12 i'm gonna bring up the eerie as well the eerie dynasty meeple Everything that you said was basically exactly the reasons why I would say it. I actually kind of like the meeple, though. It's weird. I feel like it's just that every meeple now coming, I, I just liked more than than the eerie meeple. I like the little the little eyebrow because that's really putting in most of what the meeple's expression is and all of that. But I almost wish there was like some sort of maybe a feather in there or something. Something maybe I don't know. I like what they did with the 
with the uh, hireling meeple, they added like a little bit of feathers in the back. But I do also like that we've got, you know, very, very clean meeples for these base four factions. Like they're some of the cleanest silhouettes that we have, I feel like. And I think that's that's great. But that's that's my reasoning for for uh, for the Eerie being in rank 12. Josh, where where what's your next one? <laughs> um, my next one um we are we i think that this portion we are going to be in pr pretty much agreement uh i am going to go for the lord of the hundreds on this one okay um a as before you know now of the silhouette ones you know th th this 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 is um one of the better silhouettes um i i do one thing that i do really like about um these guys um, is that um, you can really see the line work, and it's like not—it's yeah. not something that like you really get when you are like far from the meeple. But if you take a like a sure. nice close look at it, I don't know. I just really like the sort of subtle detailing that you can see in the in the line work here. So that's like one one thing that uh, elevates this meeple for me. It really feels hand drawn. Um, and you know they are all hand drawn, um, but you really yeah. get that sense with this meeple. Um, but yeah, as with uh, some of my other lower rankings, um, the silhouettes, um, <laughs> yeah, the 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 expressiveness just feels a little bit diminished. I, I agree that like if you if you compare the eerie and the uh, the Lord of the Hundreds. You know, they've both got like the angry vibe going on, but mm -hmm. the eerie, um, the the eerie eyebrow almost has more of that anger uh, than than is present in the in the Lord of the Hundreds meeple. Um, now, yeah. the, the, the the all of the other factors, um, you know, the the express there is a lot of expressiveness in that line work. And I really like the sort of subtle, like the way the eye is drawn, how it's just like ever so slightly uh, like off off from being a circle. Like it really feels <laughs> detailed for so little being there. So that's kind of why I'm ranking it higher, higher than the Eerie. But yeah, for such an angry faction, it is a little, uh, just slight, slight bit soft. So I agree with you there. I can't. I, I just cannot wait for the comments on all this, man. <laughs> people, <laughs> people love. Dude, people love the Lord of the Hundreds people. I feel like it's. It's just, and I do too. Here's the thing. I do too. It's just not as good as the rest of these. So I mean, maybe maybe they where just are we like at? the where rampaging. Are we at? Maybe they just like all of the rampaging right. that they get to do. So. Right. <laughs> yeah. Maybe that's what it is. Maybe it's more about the faction. Who knows? Um, we're at 11 now. So yep. 11 for me is going to be the adventurer. Um, this one has a personal story a little bit because it's, it's Kate's favorite vagabond to play. So I just see it on the board a lot. Um, I just, I think I've come to appreciate its simplicity. I will agree though, on the point of the tan and the brown being the line work. Uh, it's a little too close. It would probably be higher if it was a little more contrasting, but I think that it's right where it needs to be at 11 for me. Um, yeah, that's that's all I got to say about the adventurer, though. Where where are you at for for 11? For 11, um, for 11, um, I am going to go with the Harrier Vagabonds. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Yeah. Ooh. Wow. That one's the so, that was the first one I think that's hurt me. <laughs> personally. Yeah. I'm sorry. I'm sorry to a be little striking bit. out through through the internet that's and just fine. stabbing you that's, in the heart, Sam. That's fine. Yeah. That's so fine. now we'll remind our viewers we are solidly in the mid tier. So this is we're getting to the, the middle of the that's mid tier true. here. So um don't crucify me too bad. So the Harrier um I love, I love the color contrast. I think that this 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 blue on brown, it's really striking. Um, but this is one of the only meeples for me that I think there's just a little bit too much going on. This is it, it just yeah. very very slightly tips over the line for me. On there there is there is this happy medium 
where um, we've got the eyebrows, we've got the freckles, we've got like the the like cutesy face, we got the little you know, we've got two different like ears, we've got the little you know, it just feels like a lot. And it is expressive. <laughs> I do like that and it's striking. But like the more that I look at it, the more I go like what part am I supposed to be looking at, basically? Like there's there's just right, a lot going right. on. Right, right. There's just too much going on. Yeah. <laughs> That's wonderful. Awesome. So we are at now rank number ten. Crazy. Okay. Top ten here. Um, this is where the Riverfolk Company comes into play for me. The Riverfolk Company, I don't know if it's raised a little bit. I think it has, but I, I'll have to go check. I think it might have raised a little bit, which is interesting to see it more low on yours. But to be fair, I get it because I think I'm coming from the same place. I feel like its expression is a little bit... Once again, same problem with the Lord of the Hundreds. To me, it doesn't match perfectly. But... I think it's grown on me over time and I've been playing a lot of Riverfolk Company lately and the color is just so freaking good that I feel like that alone is kind of pushing it up slowly for me as I'm playing it. The, the color is so striking on the board. I just love it so much. Um, so I don't know. That's that's where it's at for me right now. I don't know if that's raised or lowered. I'm curious to find out. But right now the Riverfolk Company is at 10 where what what is your number 10 josh my number 10 is going to be the tinker vagabonds so oh, wow. uh, that's yeah that's that's funny we swapped these <laughs> yeah so so we're uh, my tinker's so, really low <laughs> yeah your tinker's really low uh my otters are really low um yeah the tinker um yeah so for me um i think Honestly, what it comes down to for me, me is that nose. So yeah. everything else about this meeple is A+. Plus. You know, <laughs> if, if we had a tier list, like everything else I think would be S tier. I love the shape. Okay. I love the like goofy eyes, the like looking askance. Um, and yeah. like the little, the little extra whisker and the buck teeth. Like all, just so many amazing elements. But there is just it, it something... Really does, yeah about that like triangle nose that like <laughs> i can't like when i look at it i can't see anything other than that nose it just draws my attention away from all totally. of the other goodness um so just so many amazing elements and that nose just kind of it, it 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 brings it from <laughs> from all from almost like you know top top few down to middle middle of the road for me yeah yeah we're about we're about in the middle of the road here which is crazy i actually didn't even think about that but the tinker does actually have probably the most accurate depiction of the artwork i would mm -hmm. say um it's got all the elements basically in the artwork itself in the meeple so that that should give it some extra points okay number nine corvid conspiracy time i love this meeple and it's hard to say anything bad about it. But if I did say something bad about it, if I did, which I will, I would say that I think that the eyes not having... They're, they're a different style because they're just the eye and it's just like, just the circle. There's nothing in them. And it kind of freaks me out sometimes. <laughs> I'm just going to say, and I think that's probably the point. I think that's probably the point. Here's the thing. We're in the middle here. So I've... I'm stretching, right? Yeah. <laughs> I love the color too, I will say. There's just other meeples that are better than this one for me, okay? We'll, we'll definitely fight yeah. on this one. You know, I'll, I'll, I'm I'll, sure. I'm I'll sure that one's going to happen. I'll leave it to my ranking <laughs> to talk about it, but yeah, we're definitely going to fight on this one. <laughs> Perfect. Um, I'm ready. I'm ready. So my, so my, nine. N my number nine... Um, is going to be um, the scoundrel, scoundrel vagabond. Okay, okay. Um, very distinctive vagabonds, yep. and I think that's kind of both its strength and its weakness. Um, mm -hmm. It it mm -hmm. is the only vagabond that 
feels so highly specific to real world lore almost like it's a halloween vagabond right like right obvious, it really like, is obviously yeah. it's a halloween vagabonds and so even though it's really fun and goofy and i love like the concept and i love the meeple um it just feels too um too too much in our own worlds like it like like it kind of pulls yeah. kind of pulls it out for me so i love the design rudy enough of it but yeah it feels more like more real world than i feel like we are looking for in our in our meeples it it, it reminds me too much that i'm playing a game i guess yeah there you go <laughs> um so yeah love love the design love the color contrast but yeah it feels too 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 cute in a in a you know in a a, a, a meme way basically we will we will discuss that we will discuss that when the scoundrel comes up in my list yeah. um <laughs> But it's a bit it's a bit higher than that, so <clears throat> I will not say anything more on it. So, uh, what is Josh? What is your favorite faction? Before we keep continue, what's your favorite faction and root uh, to play? Yeah, so my favorite faction is the Eerie Dynasties. Um, okay, you know, I, both cool. from I think that like um, my love of them. You know, I, 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 I love water juggling factions. I love, um, mm. like, I love creating plans and then trying to work out the implications of them. Um, <laughs> and I love the thematics, you know. I remember when we were demoing Root, like, publicly right before we were finishing up. We were demoing it at PAX East with a, like, 99 Point nine percent done copy, um, and wow. I remember just like when I was demoing. Whenever I would get to the eerie and describe, like they're make you know they're a court of squabbling nobles, and then they build up, and then they right. can go into turmoil. The look on pe- that's that's when people understood, like what root is about, and the, the I think yeah. that like the 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 look on people's faces as you know I, and and we were demoing like you know uh we 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 were i was demoing an unhealthy amount i was probably demoing like <laughs> i was probably doing 8 hour like at least 6 hour demo shifts just co- just constantly oh, wow. and i would we don't do that anymore um yeah, but, yeah, yeah. Uh, but yeah it's just burned into my memory in like a very positive way of just like all of these smiling people learning about root and the eerie was really like the moment um and so they're really close to my heart for both for their design and for that reason that's awesome. I I def I describe them uh, whenever I'm teaching the game. I try to give like some sort of a lore or something outside of root to kind of give you an example of like what this will right. be like to play thematically. And I always have used the Skeksis as my example. Mm. If people have watched the Dark Crystal, yeah, these like squabbling bird lords that are uh-huh. just like <laughs> totally chaotic. They're trying their best, but they always fail, and they're also yeah. trying to like topple onto each other, and then their decree goes and implodes in front of them. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but yeah, I always loved the the aspect of the it's it's brewing with so much theme. Like, yeah, it's it's amazing. Cool pick, cool pick. Um, okay, so we're at now rank eight, and this is where Harrier lands for me. Yep. Um, I I love the Harrier because I think I like the difference the different colors, even though they're kind of weird colors. I like them a lot. I also like that it took me a long time to figure out what was going on with the with the back ear there that like some people thought big ear small ear but it took me a little bit to figure out tail and the moment i figured out tail i was mm-hmm. like oh my gosh i see the other ear in there it's awesome and um i also just like the harrier a lot even though they're a menace in the game i, yeah. I enjoy i enjoy the character uh artwork a lot flying squirrels are adorable they're also so a that's menace the from a uh, from a rules perspective you know they, oh i can imagine <laughs> you know anything <laughs> that like anything that has a rule like you can move anywhere ignoring basically everything 
uh, about yeah. the game, um, but also, but also trying to make Ooh. that thematically coherent, where it's because you're flying means that there right. are all sorts of funny things around, like, vagabond allied movement rules and, like, you know, uh, uh, yeah, <laughs> just, 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 just things like that where it's, like, you have to really try to, um, uh, to, to, to craft the rule in such a way that it doesn't create these very weird situations like, oh, yeah, what is the Harrier doing? Picking up a, a giant army uh, on right. their back and flying around. Um, <laughs> so, yeah, the, 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 the rules on the Harrier uh, uh, also oh. demote. In, in my mind, looking at the Harrier, I'm like, oh, you... <laughs> the vagabond, the ask, vagabond generally, the vagabond generally is always a problem child, but the Harrier is, is definitely an example of one where I had to go back and like, okay, we we actually have to tweak yeah. these rules a little bit. So, totally, oh, that's wonderful. Well, good, some good, good little backstory on the Harrier there. Um, where are you at for for your rank eight, Josh? Yeah, so for number eight for me, uh, we are now going to see the Arbiter Vagabonds, Mr. Bushy Beard, Bushy Mustache I can't believe himself. It's so, so high. Yeah, oh yeah, no. Gosh. So, That's so crazy. I, I really like the color contrast. Um, I think I think it is I think it's a, a striking I mean I guess part of it is I like the like electric blue or like quasi electric blue okay. color in the first place okay. um, the bushy mustache is like just an innate like like you can tell <laughs> that he's a lovable grump just from that basically um, and uh, yeah I, I, I suppose and I just like badgers is is the yeah. is the other aspect of it for me so um com, com, combination of those factors and there's nothing like there's not when i look at it there's nothing distracting for me like it does feel like it's all all a piece it has like the right level of detail for me it is expressive right. because of the mustache i like the color choices so yeah we're that's that's kind of where i'm coming from i can't i can't get with you there <laughs> Obviously, I can't. But um, yeah. Speaking of badgers, though, yes. My next pick, rank number seven, is the keepers and iron. Yep. Um, I I've grown to love this meeple so much. I love that it's it's a little bit taller than the rest. Uh, it's got a, a, a bit of a height to it, which mm -hmm. I dig because they do kind of already feel like these kind of more lumbering knights that are just kind of slowly moving around, extra armored, right? But I also imagine them to be bigger. And so I, I love that the meeple is physically a bit bigger. I think that's great. Um, I also love the... I, I first, I really didn't like the metallic um, just because I was like, it's breaking what we've seen. Like we haven't <laughs> seen a metallic meeple. So why are we doing a metallic meeple now? Not just like a gray, but I, I realize you guys have already done so many gray variations with the vagabond pack that like, even if you wanted to, uh, it would make more sense to give it its own kind of look. So I dig the keepers meeple. Um, I also have just been loving the faction more and more as I've been playing it a lot more lately. So yeah, I mean, props to you. It's it's cool to actually be able to be talking to you about this because you're the one who designed it. So perfect. That yeah. just works out. <laughs> yeah, uh, it, it's it's the the my love of the eerie, you know, uh, should come through in that faction. Yes. Even even though like you know, uh, it feels very very different to me, and so it it, it took some some convincing to be like. No, it's 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 fine to uh, reuse a card slotting mechanic as long as it feels very different. And I will yeah. stick to my guns in saying that they are uh, they they're just so different from the eerie. Never judge a book by its cover. They, so <laughs> no, definitely not. No, they 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 could not feel more different. Like they they don't play the same at all. I mean, they have a similar mechanic in them, but not the same at all. <laughs> And with that, all right, where are you I, at for a seven? Yeah. yeah, with that, I'm actually going to agree. My number seven is also the keepers and I. Let's freaking yeah, go! Yeah, come come okay, to another cool. point of agreement here. Um, I, so, I love that. so I I love the metallic. Metallic, um, I think, is the perfect choice. Um, you know, it is 
um, again, representative of their um, uh, strength, their armor, their armored nature, their tougher nature. Mm -hmm. um, you know, they are on a, a mission. They have this like idea of themselves as this, you know, sacred. They're on the sacred mission, um, and yeah. so it really feels like. Um, it helps to express the keeper's own sense of themselves as this, like, they're doing this noble thing and they're going into the woodlands um, to accomplish this goal. Um, and so the metallic sure. just really, you know, it's got that sort of paladin vibe to it, basically. Um, oh, I totally feel it. So so the, the metallic, I love... Um, the it, it is a silhouette, um, but uh, what Kyle has done with... Um, this, this, the, this just added just enough supporting elements. Um, you know, I really love the striking silhouette on the eye. It's mm -hmm. just, it's just perfect. And then just the little, just the little additions on top of that. I think that it's got like that real good, like center of gravity to like focus yeah. on. And then just like that little, little bit extra. Um, so I think that. Uh, the balance of the meeple is really good in terms of like its composition. It's got just enough. Um, the silver is great, and you know, of of course, I have a lot of affection for, yeah. for them myself yeah. because they're my faction. So <laughs> I, I I can't I can't disagree with you there. I, I dig I dig the keepers a lot. So love that we can agree on that. Yeah. Next up for me is rank six, and that is the scoundrel. And I'll just say a couple of quick notes here. I actually do. Uh, I do agree that it does feel the least rooty. I think it's mostly the. I think it must be like the pumpkin. It's just like the Halloween, like what we see with 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 Halloween and pumpkins in general. I feel like uh, it just kind of makes it be like a little bit. Uh, it's interesting. I will say though, big benefit of this is that we can have a full Halloween battle on root now because we can do like the scoundrel vagabond the new bats the cats right so we've got like some good little halloween factions we could do some fun little things there yeah um but yeah that's that's the scoundrel for me um I, I, I just like the fact that it's all black. It's like a full black cat. And then like that striking little bit of orange, uh, like the mask right there. I think it captures the, the personality of the artwork so well. Yeah. But yeah. Yeah. Six for you, Josh. Six for me. Mm. Um, yeah. See, now we're getting up into the real hard. Just the real hard We're about hard to stuff. hit top yeah. five. Yeah. Yeah. We're about to hit top five. Um. And so maybe controversial. Um, I am going to go with the original Vagabond. Mm. Base game Vagabonds. The Thief. The, the thief. thief. The Thief Vagabonds. Um, the Thief... Um, I mean, there's... At this point, there's just so much to love with all of these meeples. Um, yes, I completely agree. The, 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 the shape... Um, the like it is it is a singular presence on the table, and it feels even though the shape is not um like crazy different from the other shapes, the fact that it kind of flares out um like mm -hmm. gives it this really distinct feel from all of the other base game meeples um and the um looking askance you know really uh drives home the sort of uh feeling of you know our friend the <laughs> trash panda um that, like it's just it's just like i th i think also just like i'm i'm reminded again of just like the demos where like we describe you know and then you've got the singular vagabond and people will just like pick up the the meeple and just like look at it and just just coo over this little, you know, this little terrace, yeah. basically. Um, yep. <laughs> and so, you know, iconic, iconic um, part of Root. Um, and so, uh, so wonderful. Um, like, the, the, the only thing about it for me, I think, though, is that um, 
the nose. Like, what is it with the noses? You know, this is the second time that I've kind of focused you've, in on you've these got noses. Thing. I've got a thing about noses, <laughs> apparently. You've got a thing about noses, yeah. man. The nose, <laughs> the nose just, it, it's, it's, it's kind of like almost on the eye. It, it feels, it feels like it's yeah. almost in the right place, but it's not like quite in the right place. It just like feels, it feels a little bit like, Ah, uh, it's it's so at the, at this point I'm just kind of like going going on vibes. I'm like I have to like kind of like right. you know g- grasp for reasons. But if it's anything, I gotta say it's it's the nose. But yeah, the shape is wonderful for sure. I love the eyes. It's got the right amount of detail, and I've got a lot of good feelings and memories about this guy. So vagabond, OG. I love I love that so much. Um, so before we get to the top five, silly question. You are on the road, dying. You're bleeding out right now, and you're you have slightly blurry vision. And you look kind of down the road, and uh, you see, uh, you know, a couple of factions. Let's just say, um, which faction would you accept the help of first? The Lord of the Hundreds or the Ranger Vagabond? Hmm. Well, pure... They're both kind of making your way as you're already kind of dying, but let's say you can get the attention of one, let's just say. Yeah. Um, I For survival purposes, yeah, I'm going to have to go with the Lord of the Hundreds. Um, be, be, <laughs> because, because the Lord of the Hundreds is absolutely 100% vulnerable to being flattered. Oh, that's like, a good call. That's so, a good call. So I would know the way to get in with the Lord of the Hundreds. Right. Uh, uh, but the Ranger just seems like more of a wild card. Like, you know, the Ranger yeah. The Ranger seems like somebody who has only survived because of their canny and because of their yeah. ruthlessness. Um, yep. And I doubt that they would be as vulnerable <laughs> to some of my wily ways as the Lord of the Hundreds would. The Lord of the Hundreds, I would just have to go, uh, oh, I got a lot of, like, I know where some hidden treasure is, and you look so cool today. Right. And the Lord of the Hundreds would just be like, okay, cool, uh, keep him alive <laughs> for now. You know, maybe we'll kill him later. Um, but definitely, like, we should bring him along in the night, you know, in the middle of the night, run away or something like that. So, Oh, yeah. Major Clunny Redwall vibes, if mm-hmm. uh, that means anything to people. But yes, totally. Um, I that's that's a great that's a great choice. I love it. I was wondering what, what you would choose there, because I feel like the Ranger might just kill you. You know, you, yeah. you never know. OK, so top five. We've made it. Uh, my my fifth pick is actually the Thief Vagabond. So you've just talked about all the reasons why I think it's wonderful. I'm not going to add anything to it. I think you basically nailed it. Um, I I will say I don't I don't agree with the nose point. Um, I think that it's it's perfect. The only thing maybe is the other factions, in my opinion, might just do more with what they have. That's all I'm going to say. Like, I feel like right now we're getting to the nitty gritty stuff. So um, these these next four, I mean, these are these are my favorite meeples of all time. So, yeah. All right. What's your what's your fifth pick, Josh? My fifth pick uh, is going to be the Woodland Alliance. OK, Woodland Alliance. Um, okay. Okay. I almost Ooh. shouldn't have to say the reasons why for their positives. I mean, they're the toast mice. Like they are. Right. They are toast mice. So that is, yeah. uh, you they know, cl- clearly, clearly has to be in the top five. Um, <sighs> yes. Yeah. The, the, the shape, possibly the most iconic shape, out of every single meeple. I, yeah, I'll say that. Toast, toast shape. Yep. That is, that is the the. <laughs> As if we were only ranking based on shapes, I would give sure. the Woodland Alliance the number one spot. Um, okay, okay, that's fair. That's fair. I'll take that for <laughs> for like their other parts. Um, the the green while striking, um, it just feels like the just a, ever so slightly off, just like a tone, just a tone off, and it's possible. Mm. 
it is possible that you know I'll have to talk with Kyle about like color blindness things because I'm sh- I I, okay. I wonder I'm I'm curious I'm curious about that aspect. I would really sure. I would really just like them to be just like ever so slightly see it's it's weird ever so slightly lighter or ever so slightly darker green from what they are just feels intriguing. I don't know it just feels it 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 strikes me as just a little. A little bit off. Like if I'm looking at like the the depth of the cats, right. for example, like right. the woodland just feels a little bit too almost pastel compared to okay, the okay. Re- the rest of the tone space. So it kind of sticks out in sure. a way that like I don't know. It it just doesn't it, it doesn't feel quite a piece as a piece as the as the other ones. But the shape, absolutely completely iconic. S plus 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 tier. Um, love to ha- handle it. Love to feel it. Um, the face mm-hmm. is really cute. Um, you know, especially um, considering their guerrilla warfare ability. You know, just like so cute. <laughs> yeah, just absolute menaces. Um, so, totally. So yeah, um, Woodland Alliance for me. Uh yeah. We'll 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 get on that later, Josh. We'll get on that one later. There. Yeah. Uh, for me, for me, uh, rank four now is the lizard cult. Um, the lizard cult meeple love the color. It's like that electric yellow is what I describe it as. I think there's like a colorway of a shoe that's called electric yellow and it's the exact color. So that's why I call it that. (laughs) I don't know how accurate it is, but it's great. I love the color. I love the expression. I've always loved the lizard cult meeple. Um, I think it did take a couple of dips down because some other another meeple raised up, I think, for me from my last list. But I, I would be curious to check that. Um, however, that's where the lizard cult lands at number four. I think that it is just iconic a bit, you know? It's not as iconic as a couple of other meeples, I will say, but it really is, in my opinion. Now we're getting into kind of perf- perfect meeples, I would say. <laughs> Where everything is put together perfectly. Like, the package is perfect. Um, And playing them is hilarious. Like, when you're dropping them on the map with that facial expression, it's like, oh, they're just peering everywhere. And you just look at that facial expression. It's so perfect. I feel like that's great. So that's that's why Lizard Cult's got to be number four for me. Yeah. This is getting hard. It is getting very, (laughs) very hard. Um, Number four for me is going to be... Cats. OG okay, cats. okay, okay. OG cats. Marquee. Okay, OG, OG cat. cat. Um, again, yeah, we are getting into perfect mode here. Like these, especially yeah. starting here, these last four for me are basically no notes. Um, yeah, yeah. Uh, it's really just down to like my soul. Like how, yes, how, I feel that. how closely these meeples just like <laughs> align with my soul. Um, and so cats, you know, color, iconic, facial expression, iconic, great shape, just like can't say enough great things about this. It is really, I think for a lot of people, um, just like the meat, like, you know, for, for the base game, it is just like, it's the platonic you know, root yeah. meeple. And I agree. It is my totally. top it is my top base game meeple and number four for me. Totally. Totally. That's hilarious because my number three is the Marquise the Cat meeple. So top three, yeah, we gotta get the we gotta get the cat in there. It that that expression is it's perfect. I don't know how to explain it, but the fact that they it's such little artwork and you got the entire like identity of a faction within that is just phenomenal great great work and the color is striking as well but i just love how it's like it's got like mean eyes but somehow with like that little nozzle or whatever the heck the nose there's a smirk in there i don't know how they did it but like i feel like there is like something more you know they're rude they're they're a little bit cunning like maybe a bully you know i think it's perfect i love i love the marquise de cat maple so much so we are now at your number pick or your your number three pick. Yes. Josh. My, where are you at with that? My number three is going to be the lizard cult. Um, 
<laughs> you know, you Let's go. you already said it pretty much perfectly, yep. Sam. Like the expression, mm-hmm. just like the 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 little wiggles, the little yeah. wiggles on the mouth. Just like <laughs> it's got that like it's got like um, menacing uwu vibes, mm. like. I feel that. Like it's 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 got it's got that 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 cute that that deviously cute <laughs> vibe to it that I just love. Um, like you you know that really like does. under that underneath that that face there there's it, it's it's almost hard to tell whether there's like a lot going on or like nothing yeah. going on, and that's what makes it scary. Totally. <laughs> Totally. No, I, I completely agree. And that matches that matches the, the faction perfectly. Like, yeah. It it it's very, very well done. Top two. Woo! Top we're here. Two. We're, we're, we're basically here. Closing so in. my number two pick is the vagrant vagabond. The vagrant vagabond, in my opinion, is probably one of the cutest meeples I've ever seen. But on top of it, it looks like a little bit psycho. Mm-hmm. Um, and I think that's hilarious. Like, just how un, uh, unhinged this meeple looks. Yeah. <laughs> like, are, is there a soul in there? But also, it's adorable. Um, it's also my favorite Vagabond to play. Um, so maybe that help, Maybe that's also bumping it up for me. Because I feel like the, va- the Vagrant genuinely is very interesting Vagabond to play. Even without Despot Infamy... Uh, without any of the buffs i feel like they're very balanced i feel like this meeple though is kind of also a perfect meeple i love the white and pink like that is a great color combination it's adorable great work there you know great work to to all (laughs) yeah absolutely and by the process of elimination you do know that that is also in my top two so yes yes i'm wondering if it's one or one or two uh so my where are we at my number two is going to be Corvid Conspiracy. Corvid Conspiracy oh. is my number two. <laughs> and I'm starting to realize here in my like top my top three picks, they all share something quite quite similar. Um, yeah. The Corvids to me, the the that eye. So while while the eye was a downside for you, <laughs> I think it is a yes. big, big upside for me. This okay, the, okay. The, this this meeple, um, I will tell you the original version of this meeple before we pick this one, the original version had an even more horrifying eye. <laughs> it was Ooh. like it was like something out of like the ring. <laughs> it, it it was boring <laughs> into your soul, and we were we basically were like, okay, that's maybe a little bit too much, but we still want to keep that like hollow like yeah. psychotic vibe and i yes. think it just so perfectly encapsulates the faction with so little like this is mm-hmm. this is this is a case where there is literally only one screen print on the entire that's true on, on, on the on the entire uh, meeple ah, and it's just it's just this weird little eyeball and that's it and you have to live yeah. with that you have to live with that thing just looking at you um you know taunting you like oh i wonder what this plot is i wonder what this plot is could it be a bomb who knows how about you give it a shot um right yeah i i i just love I mean, I love playing the Corvids, too. Um, the Corvids are probably, sure. like, my second favorite faction to play out of all of them. Um, because cool. I just love, uh, like, the hee-hee-hee-hee, like, you don't, you don't know <laughs> my plans within plans. Um, and I'm loving to see that, um, I think in the most recent winter tournament, they performed actually pretty well. Um, yeah, so, yeah, they did. So I'm, I'm, I'm very happy to see that even though... Yes, I would probably go back and and buff them like a little bit, but even so, the, sure. I'm so happy to see them performing really well. Um, I love playing them so much, um, and their meeple just perfectly encapsulates what they're about. I I must admit that when you mention the fact that it's really only the eye and the shape doing all of the work for that meeple, I feel like I should be bumping it up a little bit and. 
you know, I'm. It's cool. You've convinced me a little bit. Uh, <laughs> but yeah, I I do agree. That's amazing what work they were able to do with 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 so little. Before we get into the final pick, our final picks, Root has always been a game that says, you know, it's it's literally on the front of the box. Root, a game of woodland might and right. My question to you, Josh, and this may be difficult, I don't know, is who in this fight is the most right? But the thing is, is that you cannot include the Vagabond because I think that's a little bit of a cheat. Because, you know, you could you could run with any individual story and be like, they're the hero, you know. So we're, we're going to get the Vagabond out of there. You have to choose who is in the most right um, out of the factions in Root. Man, it's, it's, it's such a hard question. Because, like, almost from the get-go, you know, <laughs> even though we have this, like, basic story we tell about... Um, you know, about the bosses uh, of the woodland, you know, about the, yep. you know, old feudal order and the new invaders and, you know, the woodland alliance. You know, sometimes yep. we even like use metaphors to other pieces of media like, oh, the woodland alliance is like the rebel alliance in Star Wars, mm-hmm. which has like a more direct like good and evil, light yeah. and dark sort of thing. Like we, we never yep. really set out in route to like have particular factions be like the bad guys you know yeah. the, the lord of the hundreds yeah. may be the only sort of outlier here in terms of like uh okay we we may be saying some particular things about about him we've <laughs> m- m- maybe maybe done a little things a little bit differently with him but like by and large in root like we we try to present factions in a way where um it's really as you play the faction and as you play out the systems, you see the different facets of any given mm-hmm. faction. Um, yeah, totally. So, like, you know, just taking, like, the Woodland the Alliance as an example, like, you are, you know, you're, you're fomenting revolutions, and every time you uh, revolt in a clearing, yeah. you know, you're, you're probably, you know... Uh, you're doing some some bad stuff, probably. When you're, yeah. <laughs> um, I mean, it's kind of a with you or not with you situation, and those denizens in that clearing. I it, mean, they're not all going to be for that campaign, it, it, for that uprising. Exactly, exactly. And so, like yeah. you know, a lot of these questions, you would really have to ask the individual. Like you know, you would have to go down to the level of asking you know, people in one clearing or another what their experience of that <laughs> war is, right? You know, the, the That's Woodlands... True. That's true. Like, you know, pa- another part of that title along with m- Might and Right um, is Woodlands. And so, you know, I'll just go right. back to my obsession with, woodland, like... Woodland, Might, and Right. Yep. Ooh, that's and the a woodland, good point. And the Woodland is not just a place, it's people. Um, yeah. And so, you know... Uh, if you look at the cats, you know, of course we um, we have some very overt um, like signifiers that they're up to uh, bad ends and like the overwork action. Like you know, there there are particular mm-hmm. things where it's like, yeah, they are driving the woodland hard to accomplish their goals. But then you also have to wonder um, what was the order? Like what were they replacing in the Erie? Um, what right. were the what were the power structures there, um, and like, uh, bas- basically, like, what are what are the specific things that say the Marquise is promising in terms of say prosperity in the woodlands? Um, yep. uh, there are environmental questions with the sawmills. You know, there's just all <laughs> sorts of things there. And then you look at the Erie, and you know, obviously this. Um, nepotistic enterprise that's very, you know, uh, focused on like, um, uh, uh, lin- like lineage. They have they have a um, very chaotic political system. Obviously, oh um, yeah, they're, they're, and and it's not a democracy by any means. It's very much like you have made promises to. Uh, you know the oligarchs and the people in power, and when you fail the people yes. in power, that's when um, that's when their power structure crumbles. So, like, there are reasons to like look at all of these factions uh, in a more negative way and a more positive way. And mm-hmm. you know, we we are designing these things to be object lessons about the different ways that 
politics happen, different ways that power is uh, uh, legitimized and shared or not shared, um, and the things that groups will do in order to consolidate that power. Um, yeah. But if if you are forcing <laughs> me to answer the question. <laughs> I am forcing you to, yep. to put one as the most yes. right, even though I feel like this is the most anti- root question yes. <laughs> because i feel like the whole game the whole game is an argument right. against and for all of this right and i understand that. that's why it's my favorite game but it's why the question i think is so fun because it's like ah mm -hmm. <laughs> i hate it yeah so but yeah what would you say so if you had so, to if you had so for to. me um uh, yeah i i am uh i am going to go uh with the, the the normie answer as it were and say the woodland alliance um, okay. okay the specific cool. the specific reason for that though um no group of people just like if 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 there's anything that seems pretty true about people it's that when an a complete outsider comes in to impose yeah. rule, that mm. very rarely goes well in the long term, ever, basically. That's very fair. That's very um, fair. So, you know, at the very least, the alliance says they speak for the people. Um, they are, you know, they, 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 are, they are engaging in a form of warfare that for... Um, you know, people um, who who have outside invaders um, has eventually um, like resolved in some positive ways. You know, I'm I'm thinking about like the the, the French Algerian War, while really really horrifying. Algeria is now independent, and you know that was yeah. uh, on uh, partially on the on the face of the the resistance movement that is much like um, the Woodland Alliance. Um, so there are examples where, um, you know, the, the outcome of very heated and devastating guerrilla warfare, um, you know, can, can result in a relatively stable end. I mean, the United States for, for all of yep, its flaws too, totally. you know, that, that was started on the back of a, of a guerrilla war. Um, so, you know, the Woodland Alliance for me, um, you know, it is it is recognizing the fact that you know uh, ultimately um, representation of uh, the representation of power seems to draw from its legitimacy from um, a sense that the woodland should decide um, you know the, the the future of the woodland basically, and while yeah. every faction. Um, has constituents of the woodland. You know, the cats are not just the cats. The birds uh, are correct, not just the correct. birds. Yeah. You know, while every faction does have uh, constituents of the woodland within it, the Woodland Alliance does seem like the most direct, um, uh, uh, you know, figurehead faction for that sort of impulse. I feel like your response to this question and the the answer that you gave for it is the perfect reason for why you are designing this next expansion like i think that if people weren't convinced that you were the perfect person right now to be designing this next expansion for root i think that answer to it was the answer that people might have needed to hear because i feel like you get the game at its core like level and value so like I said, I'm so excited to see what you cook up with these two new factions. Um, and thank you for answering my my, my wild question. <laughs> but we have got the, the best two meeples. And then we're going to be looking at the two new meeples. Um, but first off, speaking of the Woodland Alliance, my favorite meeple of all time has got to be the Woodland Alliance meeple. Because in my opinion, it embodies Root perfectly. It is cute it is deadly like those two things it's the it's the most adorable meeple but then when you go and attack it it all blows up in your face right 
Guerrilla Warfare is one of the most detrimental abilities. I have friends that yell about it long after the game is over, where they're like, the 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 zero three, then the zero two, then the zero zero. It's just not fair. It's like, but it's beautiful. It's so funny. So yeah, and it, um, and it I does, love the I love it. And it does out of you know that that faction. Uh, I yeah. have a lot of love for as well because yeah, it it very directly shows you, um, you know, it 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 clearly expresses um, the notion of uh, the tighter that you grip, yeah. uh, the more problems you're going to generate. Um, and yep. so facing the woodland is all about um, balancing the. The, the 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 light hands and the uh the mailed fist as it were so oh definitely yeah. uh, i just i love this people so much I, in my campaign of slowly getting all of the meeples on my body permanently just because it started the channel route the game like this is the game that started the channel for me uh it's my favorite game of all time I, the first tattoo that i got for the meeples was the woodland alliance one on my ankle so it's there's a lot of reasons why it's my favorite but i think it's just kind of the perfect thing and i love when little kids ask me about my tattoo because they say why did you get a toast as a tattoo on your (laughs) ankle (laughs) and i think that's hilarious so all right um what is your number one pick josh i i think if you know if you've been doing the process of elimination we know we know but uh yeah yeah we 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 know that it is indeed uh the scoundrel (laughs) um yep that's my second yep. pick, so like we're yeah. we're pretty close. I um, mean, the this this perfect. guy this guy um, is perfect. Uh, I will just yeah. I will just say when Kyle um, when when Kyle uh, first designed this meeple, the 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 sheer number of memes that flooded <laughs> our Slack channels was it was overwhelming everybody understood oh, beautiful everybody understood that this was a very special moment in root um and so oh. the 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 ah the ah memes were just just flooding the, this this little guy <laughs> is uh just completely as you said is completely nuts um yeah you you do not know you do not know what he's gonna do um, and uh, <laughs> and uh, it fits the ability perfectly. Um, you know, out oh, of all beautiful. of the vagabonds, you know, uh, this guy has uh, the most game warping, and it's mm-hmm. it is saying something that uh, the 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 this this ability is another one where it's actually kind of a nightmare from a rules perspective um and oh, so yeah. it is saying something that uh the nightmare that the the meeple design can so get so close to my heart that it it just <laughs> uh squashes all of my uh more uh disgusted feelings with how uh i have to get it to fit in with the rest of the game um so i really totally. cannot cannot say enough good things about this meeple color choices perfect it's got again it's got those hollow eyes top two picks yeah for me. which is funny because I, I loved that i yeah. liked i love that in the vagrant meeple and that's why i yeah. said i think the corvi conspiracy might actually be raising up as we have this list um but yeah i obviously i love the vagrant i just talked about it so i i cannot agree more yeah oh that was great dude we did it we did it we made it through we made 18 it. ranking all 18 meeples this is the right way to rank these meeples i'm just gonna say i i'm gonna stand by that you know the the tier ranking is too it's too it's not specific enough yeah so josh you brought um the two new meeples the bats yep. and the frogs i would love it for you to show those off i i cannot absolutely wait to see them. yeah so we have we have the new meeples right here okay so oh my gosh um so we've basically got we've got these two oh, so we're just good. get we're just gonna kind of get them into the frame here 
We, we, yep. we okay? Yep. We okay, Matt? Matt's here in the studio <laughs> getting these. Yeah, yeah. Give them, give them over here. All right. Matt, Matt, uh, Matt. Woo! Hi, everybody. Love you. Yeah, so, so Matt, Matt <laughs> is, uh, is the, the secret sauce behind the camera. He's making sure that, that all of this actually works for us over here in the studio. <laughs> Um, so we've got two new meeples here for you. I'll kind of set some some of these other meeples around it just to kind of give you a sense of of scale um, yeah. and like color as it uh, as it relates to the other the other factions. Oh uh, yeah, there we go. Um, Man, that that green on the on the frog there is perfect yeah so we've really with these ones we've definitely gone more into the earth tones because as you might imagine mm. our color space you know you, you know expansion over expansion yeah. uh it is it is getting thinner and so we've really committed yep. to this um you know kind of uh you know uh marsh you know we've got bats and frogs which is very marsh marsh coated um, and so we went with more earth tones on on this one to kind of distinguish them. Um, nice tall tall bats. This is the tallest yeah. tallest maple of normal. Does factions. it beat out the badger? Uh, it does. It does beat out the badger ever so slightly. Wild. You know, the ears. The only the only exception sort of is the uh, is the warlord. Technically, oh right, the it warlord. Really, okay. It really depends upon whether you count a special piece or not. We'll leave right, it to right. You know, we'll leave it to the fans kind of to decide. Yeah, I would. I would uh, say the banner doesn't really count. Yeah. Come on, so, it's not the animal. Yeah, so you know, uh, we've got these nice tall, uh, tall bats um, and squat frogs. Um, I love the um, one one detail that I really love on these frogs is just the look of like, oh god, what have we gotten ourselves into? Basically, <laughs> um, yes. you know, uh, because they have, they oh, really have. Perfect. They're like, we're trying to do this thing at. Uh, kind of a bad time. We've got a war going on right now, and uh, boy, it's kind of a lot. Um, whereas the bats walked into have... the woodland and we're like, "What is going on?" Exactly. <laughs> whereas the bats kind of have this like resolute, uh, like we are we are committed to um, you know mm. l looking uh, straight ahead at the goal. They've kind of got this. Um, uh, we 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 wanted to try to make sure that they had kind of a. Um, we didn't want to lean into the Halloween vibes too hard. Basically, we we wanted them yeah, to kind of yeah. be um, uh, like somebody you could look up to a little bit. So you know the sure. the the, the, bat, the bats have got this um, this uh, big um, this big kind of resolute resolute vibe to them. Very different from the frogs. Can Josh? Can you do me a favor and turn the bat meeple upside down? Because oh, I have yes. this feeling that. <laughs> Me particularly will probably play with them upside sure. down if it's possible because I think that's hilarious that the bats could theoretically right. just be hanging upside down around the board. All right, first, do they do they stand okay? First test here, ta-da! They stand perfectly. That's amazing. I'm even gonna okay, try perfect because I know that people are gonna want to yep. do this. We're gonna we're gonna oh, do they'll do the, the stack. Yeah, we're doing the stack. Hey, look at one. that! Okay. And then, it's perfect. and it's then the perfect. final. We'll see if I can get the third one, and probably final can. test. Oh but my maybe. god! There oh you my go. gosh! You saw Dude, it here first. They, Triple stack of bats. They have passed the root meeple test. <laughs> <laughs> so we'll, that's uh, amazing. We'll, we'll obviously be running a contest to see how many bats people can stack on top of each other before they fall yeah. down. Uh, right. So. Well, thanks so much for showing off the meeples, and and also Josh, thank you so much for for doing this uh, just silly video with me. You know, nobody just signs up to rank all eighteen meeples. Like it's just so ridiculous, but it's so much fun. And thank you for answering all the crazy questions. Um, I know that there is more to learn about the expansion coming soon. Do you have any information on when uh, that's happening? 
Uh, I know that we're going to be doing like a live stream or something. Yeah. Uh, so, or Leader so, Games is going to be doing a live stream about the expansion. Yep, absolutely. Yeah. So we are doing a live stream where we will be revealing um, a lot more about the expansion. Um, we'll uh, be uh, giving the, the Kickstarter date, the other stuff in the box. Um, we'll basically be going through... Uh, through the through the expansion, um, giving giving all the information on that, um, and so that is going to be uh, Tuesday. Uh, it should be, uh, I believe, I believe that this is going out the same day. So if you're watching this on Tuesday, on Tuesday, um, the this, this stream is on the same day. It's going to be Tuesday um, at two p.m. Central Time. So three three Sweet. Eastern, two p.m. Central Time, and that is on our Twitch channel. So if you go to um, Twitch and go to Leader Games Media. You should be able to see it there. Awesome. We'll have a we'll have a link in the description of this video. So, uh, awesome. Well, thank you so much, Josh. Uh, everybody who viewed the video, um, you know, you got You got to choose which ranking was more in line with your own. But also, if you want to, please leave down below a comment of your full ranking. What did you guys think about the new meeples? Uh, definitely comment down below. Uh, but yeah, thank you guys so much for watching, Josh. Thank you again for coming. Absolutely. And uh, with that, guys. Let's go ahead and drop the beat. Bye-bye.